these are in terrible condition, okay? But if you look at these, there's deep scratches in this. Hey, welcome back to Yev's Bells. This is another video. One part is gonna be us doing piston rings, and the other is gonna be us doing rod bearings. So it's gonna be split up accordingly. Uh, but this one is of the following. So for those of you who are freaking out behind your computer screens right now, worrying about the fact that this block is on the on a wooden table, it's all good. It's not gonna damage the head. It's wooden. It's gonna bend the table if anything. I did have an Asian stand, but I don't have the bolts for it. But here we go, nevertheless. Oh, here you go, man. You get some brand new ones. It's never, never been used before, man. Dry sump system. Dude, that's beautiful though, huh? Alright, so after the oil pan is off, look at this beauty over here, okay? Also, we've noticed the oil pan has some copper uh, shavings in it. I don't know if you'll see it now, but that's a sign of bad rod bearings. So, I'm real anxious to see how these rod bearings are looking. Regardless, we got some new ones on the way. It's gonna be good. After you take the oil pan off, this whole dry sump system, you gotta remove that. After you remove all the bolts, after your camera films, <laughs> the dry sump system removes. Tuck it away somewhere neatly. Moment of truth, I've never seen these bearings yet. We gotta undo the bearings, the rod bearings, and we'll see what condition they're in, because if they're in crappy condition, man, it says a lot, you know? <clears throat> dude, nice. Ooh, dude, torque specs are crazy on this. We've removed the rod bearings, and we've came to some bad surprises. So, first of all, these rod bearings are in terrible condition. But if you look at these, there's deep scratches in this. I mean, deep. You can see it on the camera. There's really deep scratches. Which means what? Which means the crankshaft is in bad condition. You see all that? All those scratches on there? Those are really deep. Those are not going to be able to get, get polished off. Which, you know, would have been the easier way out. But this, the uh, yeah, there's three of them that are in really bad condition. Condition. The rest are okay. In this case, I'm probably gonna have to get a new crankshaft. Uh, new rod bearings are on the way. I already have the new bolts, the rod bearing bolts. Pistons in pretty good condition, all things considered. Um, all this we'll, we'll remove. Shouldn't be an issue, this buildup. Um, it'll be a little difficult, but we've, you've seen it. If you've seen our previous videos on how to do the heads, you've seen us remove this kind of carbon buildup, and it's fine. If the crankshaft is damaged, that means the rods are damaged, right? And um, after speaking with Phil Morrison, if you know, so if you don't know who Phil Morrison is, he um, he's the one of the first guys who made this swap originally years ago. He had an E46 M3, put a V10 into it, sold it, bought it back years later to find out that the, the motor's kind of in bad shape, right? Uh, also spun rod bearings, bad crankshaft. He bought a new used uh, crankshaft, um, repolished it, stuck that bad boy in, and got semi used new rods as well and that's what he told me because i reached out to him and he said dude there's no reason to swap out all of them unless you really want to um but they're as you know they're probably they're really expensive so i decided not to the crankshaft that i got uh the, the person who sold it to me actually sent me um rods with it uh, from the original crankshaft that i just purchased again and we'll be swapping that out a little bit later but for now I'll show you how to swap out the rod. There's a little ring in there. To get that out, I've been using some flat-nosed pliers. It's pretty simple. You dig in, in this little notch right here, and boom. <laughs> Do not lose it. Do not lose the pin. In theory, oh, look, it, it's pretty easy to pop these right out, right? Kind of have to put some pressure on it, but not a whole lot. And you don't even need to remove it entirely, really. Um, you kind of push it from the other side, boom that's out the rod is out make sure to put it in the same way it was so it came out this way with no markings on them this side has markings on them this side didn't it came out this way make sure to put the other rod in the exact same way clean out this area with a little rag just so nothing would be in there really try not to scratch anything it's very fragile stuff here okay you put it in you push it back in all the way boom it's pretty much in it's pretty much in you're gonna need a second person they're gonna be holding this side, as well as this side with with a, with a screwdriver, the flathead. They're gonna be holding that. 
And then the second person pretty much takes this portion in and pushes it back in. It's just really difficult, it's really tough. There you go, <laughs> it is in. All right, now we're gonna move on to cleaning up the pistons and we're gonna make them go from this to that, okay? It's pretty simple, it's pretty simple, man. First, you wanna dip them into some gas, let them, let them sit there for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. A lot of this buildup is actually, it wipes off pretty well. If you haven't seen our um, how to uh, rebuild the heads video, it's gonna be right here. I don't know if I can do that, but right here, we'll figure it out. I recommend you go watch it, it's pretty tight. Not tooting my own horn, but pretty tight. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take this chisel that I used, and um, this top surface of the piston doesn't really matter. So you don't gotta go too ham at it, just because you know you don't want to make too much, too heavy of uh, scratches in it. But if you do, it's not at the end of the world. This is where all the combustion happens. It doesn't really matter. So you want to kind of chisel off all these big pieces first, right? Go at certain angles, and um, just like that. There you go. Look at all that. It's coming off nice, man. Some people, I've, I've seen some people talk smack about others that scratch these. But dude, honestly, it doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter because this is where the combustion happens. The surface doesn't touch anything, okay? This is where gas and air mixes. That is it. that's done, after you chisel all the carbon buildup off, you'll remove all the pistons. If this is the first piston you're doing, remember what order they are in, so that when you put new piston rings on, they'll be in the same position and whatnot, but since, you know, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you, so don't worry. Remove them carefully, you don't want to really, I mean, nothing could happen, they're already done so. Then, you come back to your bucket of gasoline that you used earlier to make this all dissolve a little bit. As you can see, this is all just from sitting there didn't do anything, it just sat there. All right, so you wanna dip it in, you take a nylon brush, it's plastic, it's not gonna scratch up the surface. And you kinda of wanna remove as much excess, you know, this build up as you can. And since it's a little bit greasy, it'll remove pretty easily with just a rag, honestly. Look at that. For the most part, it removes pretty well. It's gonna take some time, be patient with it, and eventually, it'll be clean. As you can see, we're using a copper brush. I would use this only on this top surface, not on the sides, because again, you don't want to ruin the uh, the side of these, the, the walls, but the top surface doesn't matter because nothing touches it really. You use the nylon one to go on the sides. Once you get the top surface clean, all the sides are cleaned up you know, somewhat. You're going to have to somehow clean where the piston rings sit, right? And you can't really, like, this brush doesn't really go in there. So what we did, we made this little uh, aluminum tool. It's just a very sharp, but flat kind of tipped tool. Um, it fits right in between. And you just kind of gently um, just run it back and forth, right? Just to get all that, all that stuff out of there, all that grime, all the buildup. And over time, you kind of, you go underneath that surface and it removes it all completely. So before we put the piston rings onto the piston itself, we will check the end gapping on them, right? We will be honing this motor later on in the next episode, but for now, just to show you, this is how you do it. You take the piston ring, just like that, you put it in into the cylinder wall, you let go, and put it into its position. You take the piston itself and you kind of square it off, push down on it so it's nice and even remove it and since I'm using OE piston rings this is the gapping for it this is the correct gapping the first ring which is the one we just put in that's the gapping for it this is in millimeters so you take the first one and you make sure that it fits in between the gap it does it's nice and free good then you take the second one which is point 305 of the millimeter, and this one is not supposed to fit. 
which it does not. That's good news. So the gapping on the first ring is perfect. You do the same for the second and third rings and just double check and then you can put the piston, piston rings back on and call it a day. When you put the piston rings on, make sure they're facing the correct way. The OE rings, it's hard to tell, but you see the top? The top ring, if you can tell, C has a little R on it. Make sure that's facing the top. The second ring has a little RI on it. Also make sure it's facing top. If for some reason yours doesn't, see the little edge on it? That's the way it's supposed to be facing on the piston ring. The third one doesn't matter, it's the same on all all sides and corners, and there are no markings on it from what I know. So it's, the third ring doesn't really matter, but that's the correct positioning of the piston rings. But we are calling it good for this video. Uh, for the next video, stay tuned. We're gonna be keep, we're gonna hone the block, the cylinders. We're gonna replace the crankshaft. We're gonna replace the rod bearings, the main bearings, uh, timing chains. We're gonna do all that. So stay tuned. But that's it for this one. Peace.